Today, we're going to be looking at Conjusculpt resin. So luckily, Cheetah Systems was kind enough to send me a bottle of resin. Editing Andrew here, I just rewatched the video and didn't think it was clear enough, but I've been sent this resin for free, but I'm also not being paid to review it. So just wanted to make that clear. So this is going to be a very honest and unbiased review. Now I did a quick calibration test as that's what I do when I have any new resin. I did it at both 30 microns and 50 microns on my Elegoo Satin 2. Just I thought I'd mix it up and try adjust the layer height just to see what that could do with it. Now some of you with a Satin 2 might be thinking there's a quite high layer exposure times. This resin is a bit more viscous so it's thicker and that means it requires a bit more time to cure. I'm just following like their recommended settings and for the Satin 2 the window is like 4 to 4.5 at 50 microns. Now I'm going to be comparing it with Elegoo's ABS-like resin. Like ABS-like resin is kind of my go-to for printing my miniatures and things like that. I find that at this point, it kind of gives the best durability to cost ratio. To me, ABS is good enough, but we'll see how the Sculpt holds up. And so what I did first was with my Satin 2, I printed some models from One Page Rules. Gator model, this kind of frog on this like, I don't know, throne and some other models just to see how they would go. I then emptied out the vat, put in the Conjusculpt, calibrated it, and then printed out the same models. However, in the interest of not being scientific, I decided to do it at 30 microns. And so if there is a difference in quality, the problem is you could equate it to the difference in layer height, which is quite unfortunate. We had like some friends over and I did like a blind test of say, hey, which one do you think is the better more detailed print and five out of the seven friends said the Conjusculpt. So I know that could be equated to the, the different layer height as well, but I also did notice there were less fails or at least micro fails on the prints, particularly around the frog one, even though like the frog one's been destroyed now, you, just the edges there. And then this one's ring didn't print. So there's like, yeah, there was just a few more fails, but like it's kind of leaning in towards the Conjusculpt's favor. Then like, I just thought like the detail just wasn't coming out as like crisp as I was imagining. And one page rules, like they're detailed, but they're not like super, super detailed. I thought I'd give Archville in Games February Patreon a go. This is the most ambitious print I am doing to test out this Conjusculpt resin, so. And so I printed off like this mad lich. Like this guy's pretty huge. Like if you look at it, it's almost the size of my, like just the height of my head, I guess. So that guy's pretty big. Now where do I put him? But I'm printed that out in parts and that like the details seem pretty good. And then just some like smaller models and stuff. Some of them were quite like finicky. These little skeleton guys, they're like hollow inside. And you can see like there, I feel like there is quite a bit more intricate detail on these arch villain minis than One Page Rules. But I think One Page Rules has their own style and they're kind of going for durability. One thing I did note, and I didn't actually record it, before curing the prints, the supports like just quite flexible. Like they're really bendy. Whereas if I had the ABS equivalent, um, it would usually kind of start to bend and then like the supports would either break or they'd like break off the model and stuff. Whereas with the Conjure Sculpt, it was almost difficult to get the supports off because it was just so bendy. And I think that's just a testament to its kind of like flexibility and durability in that. And the downside is I over cured the models. They're supposed to be cured for about 60 seconds. And I know there's some variance in that just because your light source might vary in its strength compared to what they were suggesting, but I, I cured them for like three or four minutes because that's kind of my standard practice with my ABS like. And so I think I lost a bit of that flexibility and kind of that extra like bend that you have in some of the weapons. Yeah, so it's quite rigid. And so it's still quite strong. Like these things, like you drop, like the little prints at least, they you drop them and they're fine. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see like if I cured them for the proper amount of time or even like 90 seconds, just to see how much of a difference that would make to what I ended up with. But then I also did some Eternal Dynasty Guard and, and the detail difference is a bit more noticeable with them. The, but the difference was I used my Creality Hallet 1 printer and that's a 2K printer. And so I'm thinking it's just the resolution on the printers. They look very similar. And we did some drop tests um, at the standard kind of for me, the one, two, three, four foot increments. The big boy I do not think is gonna do well. And I did them outside on like the brick or the paved floor just because I thought brick was probably the hardest material you're most likely to drop your models on where you want it. Like if it's going to break, it's going to break on brick. Like I don't think carpet or a rug or something would have been a fair test. And at one foot, like I think there was a few scratches, maybe like a little, a few little parts kind of chipped off two foot. Nothing really kind of happened. There was a, a few little breakages, but then at three and four foot, 
he landed. The, the larger models did take quite a beating. And I think that's because the larger prints, they're just heavier. And so they hit the ground, not faster because of uh, Newton's laws, but they hit the ground harder. It looked like though from it, that uh, the Contrasculpt was a bit more durable in the counterparts. Like when you look at the frog, particularly this back thing, it got a little crack in it, but the other one like is almost about to break off. I get like if you were gonna do this properly, you'd probably print out like five of the same models and like drop them multiple times just because depending on how a model lands and hits the ground, if it hits the ground on a more fragile part, that's more likely to break. And so it might not necessarily be the resin itself that caused the damage, but just how the model landed. Despite that, it does look like the Contrasculpt is just a bit more durable with the impacts. Like some of the, like this dude, how did this guy not break? Like, insane. he's got like spikes, got this like finicky cloak. Like this, is, this guy's like a unit. I think it is quite durable. If you're gonna make an army out of this, it's gonna be difficult to break unless you're like dropping it from four foot on concrete. Ah! Okay, so we'll just go through a bit of the pros and I think just from like yeah, my experience with using it for the bottle and just the multiple prints I did, the detail is better than ABS like. like ABS like, you just gotta remember, ABS like is already like above like standard polymer resin or whatever, like the base like cheap resin. Like ABS likes, like the standards are already like up here. Now I'd say like Condoscopes are like, even higher. Like it's, it's it, the details better. Durability is also better. It seems just like if I cured it properly at the appropriate times, it would have a bit more of that give. And so I want to kind of give it the benefit of the doubt that it is more flexible. But the cons, like it's a minor thing, but it's a longer curing time. And so a longer curing time per layer is gonna overall equate to a longer total print time. Depending on how you use your printer and stuff, it just means prints with this resin are gonna take longer. So if you're pumping it, you're trying to pump out an army quickly or something, I don't know. Like I think most hobbyists won't, it won't matter too much. I think the big one that's kind of, it's con, which isn't really of it, the resin itself, it's just, it's a higher quality resin. And so obviously a higher quality price product is going to cost more. It's just cost per bottle. I'm not 100% sure exactly what it is, but it's just going to be a little more expensive. That's kind of what you have to weigh up if you're considering this resin. And my final thoughts is it is a good resin and you are getting what you pay for in that. If your application requires something to be quite durable and just like a high level of detail, like this would be a good product for you. This would be a good resin to choose. However, if you're trying to like just mass, I don't know, you're playing like a Skaven or like some sort of horde army and you need to print out a bunch of stuff, it might not be worth using this resin. I think it might be better to use some cheaper resin and save this for the more detailed products. And I think it's one of those things where for me, like this would be the like the hero, like prints with like feathers or like really intricate detail. This is what I would save this resin for. But then for the bulk of my printing, I'd be using ABS Lite just because it is a bit cheaper. Uh, yeah, let me know if you've used this resin before. If you want to watch me review Elegoo's water washable resin, try saying that three times. You can click over here. Or if you'd like to watch another hobby related video, you can click over here. Thank you for watching and happy hobbying.